My iPod Touch has been out of warranty since February. It is not eligible for service. It is not eligible for phone support. It is not eligible for an extended warranty. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why don't I jailbreak my iPhone or my iPod Touch? The reason has to do with that warranty and also possible legalities. I've seen the videos of how to jailbreak your device, and I'm a little bit wary to do that, only because, you know, it's one of those what-if-something-goes-wrong scenarios. However, I did some more reading, and most people are saying that it's not illegal. Um, the, Dig the Digital Millennium Copyright Act essentially said that if it were to circumvent the inner code of the iPod Touch, that would be illegal, but from what I've seen, now, in case I'm misinformed, please, please bring me up to speed. Now, I'm open to it. Um, from what I've seen, though, all it does is it will install an application that will allow you to install third-party applications, and this is not just the App Store. This is not the App Store. Um, to be fair, this feels, I've, I've seen this in action as well, and it feels more like a Linux repository. Which brings me to my next question. What is the difference between this and the iPod Linux project that's currently under development? There's a development going on, there's development going on right now of a full Linux distribution for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. It is not ready yet. But when it is, um, you'll be able to install Linux on your device. And the beauty of Linux, um, GNU Linux, actually, that is its proper name, and I'm trying to call it by, you know, that name. I'm trying to call it GNU Linux. It is hard because most of the people refer to it simply as Linux. So calling it GNU Linux, they may think GNU is a distribution. So, But GNU Linux is its proper name. Uh, that aside, um, so yeah, GNU Linux for the iPhone and iPod Touch is under development. Now, thanks to the general public license, everything developed for the Linux platform is free and open source. Um, this is a little bit of a contrast to the iPhones and iPods that are jailbroken. And the reason I say that is because um, people, I, I, I saw a few videos. One of the videos, someone said that everything on the in, in the installer... Uh, repositories are free. They even give you access to the BSD command line. But the issue that I have here is what if there is copyrighted stuff on here that should not be freely distributed, and I'm not aware of it? You know, like, does it tell you whether or not, um, you know, something should be paid for or not? In other words, is there anything on there that is illegal for download? Um, basically, I want to stay clear of that. One of the positives that I saw to jailbreaking, though, speaking of Linux, is the possibility of having drivers and software that would make Linux, the iPod recognizable on a Linux box. Now, again, this is just a thought, but back to the subject at hand, um, from what I could see, Jailbreaking the iPod Touch is, it sounds very similar to putting Linux on it because it opens it up for full, full customizability. And again, it even gives you terminal access, or, or excuse me, command line access, just like Linux does. You can go down to the core and change it. Now, I'm not sure if you can get that low with the iPod, but, um, but again, my iPod is out of warranty, so whether or not I choose to jailbreak now is going to be based solely on, um, you know, just a will to do it, and at this point I'm kind of at a fork in the road. Part of me wants to do it, part of me wants to not bother, um, so I'm still trying to decide, but the part of me that doesn't want to bother is telling me to wait for the iPod Linux project to, to be complete. Um, but if somebody could tell me what the difference is between Linux and the jailbreaking of the iPod, Ver GNU Linux and the jailbreaking of the iPod versus, um, you know, aside from the from the possible 
the legal legalities of downloading copyrighted works, but, you know, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, comments are welcome, and have a nice day. Oh, one more thing, um, I do plan to update to version 3.0 before doing anything, and the reason is because of the accessibility on board. Will I still be able to use the applications that come with the device once jailbroken? Because the accessibility features are a magnifier and gesture-based screen reader, both of which I could benefit greatly from. Uh, thank you for watching again. Comments are welcome. Thank you for your input. All negatives will be deleted. All insults will have you blocked. I am not kidding. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.